שבוע טוב, הגו תבוך. My apologies for not being able to tell the story about Shem Tov last week. We'll catch up this week. Story number 63 of the Shibchei Abel Shem Tov is called Shibchei Rabbi Abraham HaMalach Ben HaRabba Magd Mestrich. This is the praises of Rabbi Abraham called HaMalach, the, the angel, the son of the Magid of Mestrich. This uh, Rav Abraham uh, is known as Hamalach, the angel in the Hasidic communities of Poland. Um, I have a note here that among uh, Lubavitcher Hasidim and other uh, Hasidim farther to the east of Poland, um, he's known as uh, Rav Abraham Hakadosh. He is the son of the Magid of Mesrich, who is the um, continuation, uh, the next Rebbe after the Balshamtov. So, um, the, the story will now focus on Rav Avraham HaMalach and his father, the Magid. Rav Avraham HaMalach um, um, spent the last years of his life in a city called Fastov, where he passed away on the 12th of Tishrei, as we will tell in the story, um, in, um, in the year of uh, 1776. So let's go into the story. This is a story when um, Rav Avraham Hamalach, the angel, the son of the Magid, the great Magid of Mesrich, um, became the Magid Misharim, it's a position in which he will preach um, moral related matters to the holy community of Chavastov, which is Fastov, the city where he would spend the rest of his life, um, who uh, interceded to put him in this position, who was the intermediary, was Rabbi Menachem Nachum, Menachem Nachum, the famous Chosid of the community of Chernobyl. We may all know or have heard of Chernobyl for the uh, nuclear um, plant uh, accident um, in the 1980s, but uh, 250 years earlier, there was a major Jewish community. As a matter of fact, up to uh, the Holocaust, there was a significant Jewish community in that place. Um, and this uh, Nachum or Menachem Nachum of Chernobyl is a very well-known uh, teacher, spreader of uh, Hasidus in that town at the, the, the generation after the time of the Baal Shem Tov. So the author of the story says, I heard from uh, Rav Yoel of Prothur. This Rav Yoel of Prothur is the one who is going to now, through the author, be telling the story, um, who heard the story when he was spending Pesach by Rav Nachum in the community of Poribosht before he, um, when Rav Nachum goes back to Chernobyl. So attention, because the narrator who is telling the story will go through a few voices up to who is actually, where is it actually coming from. So the author is mentioning that he hears from Rav Yoel of Prothur, who spent Pesach in Porivosht and heard from Rav Nachum that the day after Yom Kippur, there was a shliach, a messenger, who was sent to Rav Avram, no, I'm sorry, for, from Rav Avram to Rav Nachum, to tell him that Rav Avram was very weak, um, had become very weak during the fast of Yom Kippur, and by the time of Neila, by the closing players, prayers at the end of the day, he was no longer able to speak. He was too weak to speak. So um, when this happened, the people in the community of Fasto asked Rav Nachum, asked Rav Avram if, if they should send an envoy to um, Rav Nachum to pray for him. And he said yes with his head, since he was unable to speak anymore. So they sent a, uh, a shliach uh, right after Yom Kippur finish. And um, he arrived. Uh, before uh, Sukkos and was able to notify um, Rav Nachum of the illness of Rav Avram 
And Rav Avram went to Mikveh to prepare himself, saying, I'm going to pray for him in my place. What he didn't know is that after this Shaliyah left, two days after Yom Kippur, the 12th of Tishrei, Rav Avram was so sick that he passed away. Before Sukkot began, the holiday of Sukkot began, um, the news of the passing of Rav Avram reached the town, but were not told to uh, Rav Nachum. They didn't tell Rav Nachum, Nachum that uh, Rav Avram, the son of the Magid, had passed away. However, during the days of Cholamoy, during the intermediate days of the of the holiday, somebody innocently let it, uh, let it be known to Rav Nachum that uh, Rav Avram had passed away. So Rav Nachum was in such a distress, he begin, began uh, hitting his head against the wall and crying bitterly for two hours. People from the community grabbed him by the arms and brought him into, into the sukkah and told him, Rebbe, remember, we're in a yomtev, we're in a holiday. We're supposed to not, not be crying, we're supposed to be happy. So he calmed himself down and then began telling the praises of Rav Avram, who this Rav Avram was, why he reacted in such a way. So he, now the story has been told by Rav Nachum to Rav Yaolo Prothu, who is telling it to the author of the book. Now the voice goes to Rav Nachum, who says, Once I was in the holy community of Anipol, and I met Rav Avram, and I asked him if, I, if he had seen his father. And he said, yes. Do you see him in your dreams or when you are awake? Rav Nachum is asking Rav Avram. Rav Avram Hamalach answers, he comes to me in my dreams, and he speaks to me, and then when I am awake, he continues talking with me while I'm awake. So begins in the dreams, but continues when he's, once he is awake. Rav Avram told Rav Nachum that there was a, a, a very powerful uh, man in a, in a high position, they say a nugget, literally could be a governor or, or a very wealthy man, who um, had caused him much distress. As Rav Yoel is telling the story to the author of the book, he says, I'm not going to tell you the name of this man. So Rav Avram hears this and he goes to complain to his father. And his father, the Magid, who had already passed away, tells him, I will call him. This, remember, Rav Avram just said, his father speaks to him. So Rav Avram asks his father, the Magid, where are you going to call him to? To your best matters, to your house of study. So the Magid tells uh, his son that he sent his um, helper, Rav Filt, who was his helper during his lifetime, was still alive at the time, um, but he was um, 70 leagues away from Anipol in the um, land of Polesia, somewhere else in Poland, very far away. So um, Rav Filt travels, it's implied here by Kfitzasaderch, by basically flying, miraculously appearing in Anipol, in a very far away place. Um, I don't know exactly how much is a league, but we're talking, it, it could be uh, in tens of miles, so we can talk, talk about uh, very far away, like a distance of a country away, and he suddenly appears there and is knocking at the door of this powerful man and tells him, open my door. The powerful man recognized the voice of this man, of Rob Field, and he asked himself, saying, wait, didn't he, like, he came out of his house, he was somewhere else, and then he said, well, maybe he arrived during the night and I didn't know. So I'm um, going to welcome him. He's like trying to figure out how did he suddenly appears in his town. So he opens the door and they ask each other how they are. So Rafield says, 
I really don't have much time. Uh, my master, the Rava Magid, is calling you. The, the powerful man is taken by surprise and he says, What are you talking about? <laughs> Our Rebbe, the Magid of Mesrich, didn't he already pass to his world? Didn't he return to his master? And Rockfield says, Yes, yes, but he's calling you. Come, come, come. And as surprised as he was, this powerful man went with him all the way to the best medrash of, uh, of uh, Rabbi Abraham Hamalach. And once he comes in, he finds that the Magid is sitting at the table, dressed in the same clothing as he would when he was alive, looking at him. And the Magid tells him, Do you think that because I am not here, you can do whatever you like? He was causing problems for Rabbi Nachum. He was... Do you think you can behave like this because I'm not here? So that's why I'm showing you I'm here. If my presence is what makes you behave, I'm showing you I'm here. It says in the Zohar that a tzaddik is more present in this world after his petiras, after his soul has departed, than when he was alive. I'm offering that as an explanation. The man seeing the maggot, after the maggot has passed away, sitting at the table in front of him, telling him, do you think that you can just behave like that because you don't see me? So the rich man, this powerful man, started presenting excuses, uh, trying to explain reasons for his actions, but the Maggie didn't want to listen to him and told him, go, go, Rafil, take him to his house. Rafil took him back, took him back to his house, and when he arrived, he fainted. There was a great uh, tumult in, in town and his neighbors came and tried to wake him up and ask him what happened. <laughs> Why did you faint? So he tells them what happened. And immediately the neighbors say, we have to take you back to Rav Avraham. Let's see what's going on. So all the neighbors bring this powerful man back to Rav Avraham Hamalach. And he smiles and he says, I'm sure your father asked you to go. They ask Rav, uh, Rav Avram, the, the neighbors of the rich man, how did you know? Huh, my father told me he was going to do so. And that is the story of this week. We will continue the next couple of weeks focusing on Rav Avram Hamalach to then go back to the Baal Shem Tov. Shavua Tov, a good evoch.